So next we need to get the stop part on and now we gotta remember to install this bottom seal here and there's nothing else. Make sure the screw is in there in the middle but it seems to not want to fall out so that's good. So that's gonna screw in there and then these two tabs here are gonna hold it in the back here. Can you hand us the little control rod? Thank you. And you want to put it in line, you know, flat bit in line with the length of the, the iron. Not flat like that, because if you look in the hole, I don't know if you can see there, but you'll see there's a, a flattening part of it where it elongates, so it should go like that. And now your biggest problem is going to get this little chewy through the hole here while you lowering it down. So just looking through the top, align it, and then... Yeah, well, unfortunately, you got to get both things in there now. The control lever, you see, there it is, and the chewy. Okay, so the only thing is to get the tabs to open up. So you can just pull them like that, that should snap in. And make sure this line is parallel, as well as this one. That means it's in both sides. Now we're just going to screw this down. The smaller screwdriver, the small of the Phillips, smaller one of the two. That's it. Now we're going to pop this little steam tube back if we can get hold of it. You'll see that thing is pretty bendable, the little nib where it goes on. So you can bend it up a little. You can get your fingers in there. And just use the needle nose pliers again to help me get in there and back it up here on the back while pushing on the front okay I think that's fine okay and uh, hand me the little steel rod for the valve and the little rocker so the steel rod you'll see this end of it is bent out and it just points to the, to the back now uh, just stick it through there, you'll feel it goes reasonably straight, it should. And this rocker needs to go this way, this little bit goes towards the top. You'll see it, it won't go, I mean if you push it, it'll split the, those two things open. But uh, you shouldn't, it should just sit like that. And you can sort of see where that thing needs to hook in here. So let's see if we can thread it in, like that, okay. It works nicely. Let's get the ball bearings, the springs and the pistons for the two push buttons up here. Here's the two ball bearings. I'm just gonna drop them into the massive tube. Into the tubes there. Into the missile side of And these are the two springs. I think they are the same either way. I can One might be slightly more worn because it'll be more easy for mom, but Yeah. Just drop them in. They will fall in the right spots and then just put the knobs the right way around. Steam one goes on, on the on the left and you can basically just pop them over. They just they bendy enough to be going over without a problem. Give it a test push, it should be reasonably firm. This one goes on the other side and just make sure they hooked in at the back here. They know where to go. If they feel like the buttons on a video game controller, then you, you need to hook them in. They should feel really stiff. Yeah, they feel pretty stiff. And I think it's because I cleaned them, so the rubber is sort of new and grabbing on the sides better than before. Okay, let's do the control knobby thingy. Okay guys, so this, this guy goes up next here. And if you remember, it's the one with the V notch in, in the bottom there. It just goes on top here. And you just want to make sure you hook it, the collar into there. And I, I first need to figure out, is it all the way to the left or all the way to the right? Because it's all the way to the right, but I've put this thing all the way to the left. You see the little knobby here points to the left. It should actually point that way. And you can just... Try it to see which way it wants to go. 
So let's see, it should be able to turn through 180 degrees. So now it's all the way to the right. You see the little thingy there? And all the way to the left. And it's hooked in here, very important, so it can control the valve for the water, for the steam. That's good. This goes in the back. Okay, so now I think we're ready for this guy. And again, keep in mind there's a little cut out there for this little tip so you gotta orient the tip in the same direction just to get it through the hole there let me show you you see that little notch there and this little tip here and they need to line up Just like that, once you're through, you can bring this back. This sticks in the back there. Now we need the last screw. In. And drop this one in here. Okay, that's that. And I think we can finish up here. We don't need to do anything more here. So this guy is very bendy, so you can just pop it in like that. And here, the only thing you gotta keep in mind is where that's that little nub point. And it's in sort of this direction. So you wanna keep this the same. Pops right up over and make sure you've got the full range there if you don't open it back up and check why and it shouldn't so maybe check the full range before you pop everything back on yeah that's the knobs so they they must be able to be f they must be firm but pushable okay let's look at the back here next thing we need to do is hook the electronics back up it probably would have been easier to hook this up a little earlier, but it should just slide on there. So on the right hand goes the black wire and this grey one goes on the left. Just for reference, I am holding the plug in my hand. That's the plug. Don't... While you're doing this, don't leave it plugged in. Please. Our next job is to get this thing back, the electronics back, screw down into this, the back plate. First thing we want to do is to get the cable back in, in position. It goes in like this, the round bit goes to the, uh, into the back, to the bottom of this plate, like that. And this guy holds it down. And I like to route this cable around the side here, because it looked to me like if you put it anywhere else, it just gets in the way. So you get the cable in that position and then next goes the electronics. And it, you'll see this part slides in between these two pillars. And this part needs to go in, in that gap there. And here with the back, you'll, I'm not sure this switch part is fine there, you'll switch thingy, and this side, there's this, I need to bring this down a little bit, there's a cable, there's this little stand here, that pushes somehow against this cable thing. Okay. You'll see there, it's in between those two, that this little plastic part. On this side, this big plastic part is between those two stands. And at the back, here, you'll see the, that one cable connector is just off to the side of that one. And 
the switch. Let me just see if I can see it from the side. You can actually hear it there, so that's good. Sorry guys, I thought <laughs> I said the cable goes in this way, it doesn't. It, it needs to be the other way around. So I'm just going to leave this in there since it's not fun to struggle it in. It actually goes like this. You want to see the rounded edge towards the front of your backplate. Otherwise you'll find it doesn't swivel anymore. So now this goes in there. This goes just next next to that little nub that's part of the electronics holder. And then we should be good. Sure, the cable can swivel. I think it will naturally pull a little more cable in there so it swivels more easily. Okay, now we just need to pop it back up. And you'll remember that it's got these two nubs here at the bottom, so we just want to hook them in on the inside of the black edge here. There. You see there, that's a nice fit, and it naturally just goes into position here. Okay, so last thing is just the screw again. A little white screw, I don't know what you call that, but it's looks like a Y on a peace sign. So we've come full circle. Okay guys, I filled it up with water, made sure it doesn't leak, just by holding it and seeing no water drips out. Uh, as you can see there, it's, I hope you can see the bubble there, but it's filled to the top with water. So let's just see, setting this to steam, and turn it on, Aiden's plugged it in for us. I'm just gonna sit it down on this. Harry, we've got a little battery warning. Well, let's give it a little time. You can already hear it, maybe? Can you hear it, Steven? Yeah, we can hear it. And this... Always do this after you worked on it, because you see the crowd coming out of there. But it seems to be doing its job. Let's set it a little lower. It should stop ste steaming except for picking up the water down there. And yeah, there is steam rising. You just can't tell. Let's steam it again. You can hear immediately if I turn it, the water obviously starts pouring into the steaming chamber down below. And it seems to be working fine. Let's put it on dry. See if squirting the water works. There we go. Squirter works. Let's see if the steamer, this extra steaming button works. That's why I put it on dry. You get, so, might take a squeeze or two. Did you get it there? See that? Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. And let's do this side. I just want to make sure no black stuff is coming out of there because that's bad for the clothes. Well, well, Dad irons us off. If you like this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Today Dad showed us how to fix the Black & Decker Quick & Easy Auto Off 485. If you like this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye.